book. There are guidelines that Abmo, you know, wrote in that book, and which I thought were very important, and perhaps we had also never considered. Because some, some, sometimes we start off things blindly. You just don't know where this journey is leading you. But along the way, you learn, you get better, you know. And yeah, so uh, he said, be clear on the group structure. You know, if you're coming up with any sort of group, it might be a group of two, three, four. Be very clear on the group structure. Is it a company? Limited by shares? Is it a cooperative? Is it a trust? Clarity is very important. It's important, especially where money is involved. Friends, I tell you, when you're dealing with people and you're taking your money, you better be clear about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> So uh, the other point he said is be clear on ownership or share value for different shareholders. So just going back to that very first point that I mentioned, be clear on the group structure. We were not clear on our structure when we started. We, were not, we didn't know. I remember, I'm sorry, I keep on going back to Jonah because he has been key in this. He has really helped us as well find our path, because I went to him and I said to him, how do you even form a company? We've never done that, because then we thought we had come to that moment, you know, whereby we needed to form, you know, a, 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 a company for us to move out. And if you do, what is it about? Is it, like I mentioned, is it limited by shares? What are you going to be doing? Yeah, so be clear, uh, be clear about the group structure. Be clear on ownership or share value for different shareholders. I'll still tell you that when we, we, like, we started off and it was just a few of us and everyone who put in what they put in at that time, we hadn't even calculated percentages. We didn't know what it was. But after reading this, I, was, I, I said, wow. The good thing is that one of the um, ladies in the group is very good at reading. She had already read this book before we read it. So she knew. She, sa she had said to, she had mentioned to me that, Miriam, we need to have a structure and we need to have these shares, you know, lined out, you know, written down have a spreadsheet, do things. We were just going blindly. <laughs> so be clear. Be clear on um, types of investment the group is set for. If you've gone into investment, Apmo says it's better to belong to different groups specializing in different investments than one doing everything. You know? Then, because you, you get confused, you will do everything, you will not specialize in anything, outline what you want to do, and I think you will find it's better. Uh, last week, I walked off and went to the north so quickly, but I, re uh, I listened to um, Mr. Talmadi's message, which was really good. So those who are here as well, I think you remember he mentioned about in, in, in not, in not in those very words, but at he was showing, be clear as well in what you're doing in, in investment. He went into property and he's also diversified into something else, but he's not doing everything. Because when he tried to do everything, you know, you heard him say, he, they told him, the goats, the goats ran off. The <laughs> when he went investing in goats, they ran off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You so you put your money somewhere, you haven't got you know, you haven't bothered to get the knowledge. Someone is ready to take that money and put it to good use to their own good use. So honestly, we need to get e equipped with this knowledge. And we are on a journey, and honestly, I cannot tell you that I'm there. Perhaps you might even have questions that I cannot answer at this moment. 
But I have to just be open to you and tell you what we are doing and how this whole class has opened up a lot more for us, you know. And I'm about to finish. So um, be clear on the types of investment. Be clear on your vision. Be clear on your vision and leadership. So we want to be financially free. And I bet everyone here wants that for themselves, for everyone, you know, for your relatives. There are steps to achieving that. So we, we need to plan. How do we achieve this? Are we going to be honest? If you're a group, you know, how are you going to be accountable to one another? When it's your turn to bring that money, are you going to come up with an excuse and say, well, this month, I'm sorry, I'm not able to bring in the money, yet you are already given your bit. No, we don't want that. Honest, we, we want to be honest and we want to be clear and we want to have a structure so that we go on this smooth journey and God will help us, help us, help us all. And lastly, he says, no emotions, no emotions, no emotions. There is a reason he mentioned it three times, and I wish I would go and ask him why. Plus, he put exclamation marks at the end. No emotions, no emotions, no emotions. And I don't want to talk much about emotions, because when it comes to us women, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't want to go there before, you know, I, I think they say I'm, I'm, I'm gender biased too. But sometimes we get so emotional at things. And if we're emotional with things to do with money, I don't know where that would leave us. Please allow me to stop here and call um, Elder Jonah, Brother Jonah. <laughs> Can we appreciate Miriam? What a Miriam. Miriam, you can take a seat, but you will come back. Yeah? I don't think Miriam has really given us... We wanted to hear how much profit have you made? Yeah? How, when are you setting up a standing order for us to benefit from your group investment? But uh, well done, Miriam. Thank you so much. And it's good to share your experience as well. Can I... Can I just ask, Marvin, have you got my slides? OK, so what Miriam did ask, and can I encourage people, especially in the big service, we, we are OK with tagging along. So Miriam did ask me and talk about working together. She told me that she's, uh, she will explain group investments, what she's done, how it's worked for her, what she's learned from that. But there's, those who've read the book, there's a bit of maths that comes in later on. And she was, and I love a spreadsheet, by the way. Forget being a maths teacher, I love a spreadsheet. I always want working out things and saying, what does that look like? What are the percentages? So I love all of that. So hence why I'm standing here. So I have a very simple job to do a quick illustration of the theory that we've heard from Miriam. Are we okay with that? Okay. We need some questions asked because, Miriam, there are people I know who've gotten involved in group investments and things have gone really badly. And when you stand here and say group investments, people are like, me, I gave up on that one. Yeah. So, Marvin, if you can go much further on, I think I just added on to... Just go on, go on, go on. There are some figures somewhere until when you get figures. All that I did last time when I did net worth, Ignore all of that. Go on, go on, go on. Just go on, Marvin. Go on, I'll tell you to stop. Just, yeah, just there. Just stop there. Okay. So, can you see that? Or is it too small? Oh, you can see it. It's just from here. I was trying to see the one at the back, and I'm thinking, hey, that is not too good. Okay. So, Miriam has, ex has gone through group investments, the whole idea about working together. And thank you, Miriam, for emphasizing the need for even first building relationships beforehand. 
Some of us think you can just come to church or in a community and just walk past people. You feel like you're an island in yourself. Okay? It is important that we relate to people because later on, the people that Miriam runs to initially are the people she's been relating to. Okay? The people she's cried with or the people she's, she's laughed with. Those are the first people you run to. So thanks for sharing that. Then clarifying around what are we setting up. This whole friendship thing, and I remember talking, discussing with Miriam, and I told her, please forget this thing of this one is my friend. Please forget this thing of this one we hug. Why was I sharing that? Because I've had my own experiences. We've had one group that was based on friendship, and it had its successes, but eventually it broke down because it got to a point where there was no legal structure to it. So it was easy for someone to just come and say, can I have my money back? Now, when you've put all the money in investments, quite a substantial amount of money, and someone comes and demands, talk about emotions, even women get emotional. For me, this was a small group of men. I think we're about six or seven. Yeah? And someone demands, I want my money now. So you have to source amounts of money from different places and say, you know what, let's pay off this what? this gentleman, for the sake of peace. And just to say, I'll testify that we've remained friends, all these six people. But we had to stop the group. And the reason is there was no clear legal structure. Did we make some money? Yes, the money was there. But there was no legal structure. And we smiled. We loved football. We loved different things. We played football together. But the problem is there was no legal structure. So when Miriam says, be clear on the structure, please be clear. Okay, if you're getting into anything. So, what I would like to do very quickly, hopefully, then we get some questions. Must be that you can sit for a few minutes. I don't want to keep you standing. Is um, up more, these are some of the principles that we've learned throughout the session. And I think Irene Cafero did this session about the basics of financial management. And the first thing she taught us is... Um, earning money. It's important that you earn money. So everyone here who is of working age needs to make sure you're earning some money. Upmo makes it very clear, and not only Upmo, I think you've lived long enough to know that it's important for you to earn money. You must earn some money. So the first thing is earn money. So the first question I want to ask you, are you earning some money? And I'm not asking you how much. It is, are you earning some money? And you are the only honest person who can answer that. I can't answer it for you. If you're not earning money, what are you doing today, starting now, to make sure you earn some money? That's the first thing. You must earn money. You can't start financial management, financial breakthrough. You can say all you want, that you want a financial breakthrough, you want all of that. But please help me. You know the God we serve can amaze us. But for the few years I've lived, I've not yet heard of an experience where money drops like this and just lands. Okay? I think we were told that how do, we, how do people become wealthy is they inherit it, they marry into it. Those, are those who are married and you're not yet wealthy too late. No, I'm joking. You can work together and become wealthy. Okay? You can marry into it, but the most important one, where the majority of us fall, is work, 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 work. So please earn some money. Now, the basics we are taught is when you earn, and I try to use a basic example here, someone earns 1,000 pounds. The recommendation is give away 10%. That's broken into two. 10% to your local church, and another 10%, you know, these contributions we make, weddings, um, funerals, um, just being generous. Like Miriam said, you want to honor someone, buy them a shirt, buy them something, use that other 10%. So that reflection of 20%, which is 200 pounds, on a monthly basis. So if you earn 1,000 pounds, this is how your finances need to look like basic if you're even to start saying that you're going to do something about your finances. Basic. 200, 200 pounds you give to the church, 100, and then another 10% you give 
Because why do we make wealth? To be generous. That is the ultimate goal. We must be generous and build the kingdom of God. Then, you are, of course, going to survive on 60% because another 20% must go into your savings and investments. Now, for the time being, let me just say savings because it's just basic. So you're that person who's saying, I don't like investments. My dad has never invested. Me, I just want to keep my money. If you do this, that's not bad. Let's go to the next slide. So annually, you'll have 2,400 pounds just saved. If you're asking yourself, I just multiplied uh, 2,000 by... 12, that makes 2,400. If you do it for three consecutive years, that's how you, it looks like. So year two, you do exactly the same thing. Year three, exactly the same things. Some of you who understand spreadsheets and money are thinking, why is he going too slow? Because it's important that we get the basics right. Okay? So if I'm going too slow for you, I'm sorry, but next time I'll go, I'll go, what? I'll go much faster. So the second slide is about how do you keep your money? Okay, uh, so you're keeping your money by, of course, giving and all of that, because that's an investment as well. Then you're saving 200 pounds, and at the end of each year, you have 2,400. Next slide. So this is what happens after 10 years. So I don't know how old you are now, but if you add 10 years, if you do this consistently, all you're doing is just the basics. Tell your neighbor basics. And for the young people, please, when you get a job, I don't care even if you earn less than a thousand pounds. These are just the very basics. My daughter, my daughter plates hair, and she had a customer yesterday who was her sister. Yeah, and we pay her. Yes, because they used to go to these uh, hair things. So we had an actually we had an interesting scenario yesterday. I like telling stories because I think that helps. My wife, I, took, I dropped my wife to the salon yesterday. Allow me not to say how much she paid for her hair, but she paid some money. Then my daughter, Nesaya, was plated by Nisi at home. Okay? And we're going to pay Nisi for that. Now, before, mommy used to go with the girls to the salon. So we used to pay that same amount that mommy paid. Okay? Now... The reality is, I'm telling Nisi, please practice these basics. Practice the basics. Okay? And I'm not saying she's perfectly doing it, but at least I'm passing on that message. So young people, pick on that. Is that good? At the end of the 10 years, what do they have? 24,000. So whatever your age is, if I told you that in 10 years' time, you'll have 24,000 on your account just there, that's not bad, is it? Okay? It's not bad. It's not a bad start. But I want to challenge you on expanding. Talk about knowledge and learning. Expanding this. So let's go to the next slide. Good. So the next principle that Apmo taught us is about growing your money. Yeah? So if in the first year you did those first basics that are in orange, then what you started thinking about is um, investment income. Let me use this, okay? So in the UK, it is said that on average, this is, remember this is average. I'm not saying every investment. In Uganda, if you read the book, I think they use 25%. Now I was saying, I wish in, in the UK they also gave us 25% interest. But I did some research, and it said between 5 and 7% based on some of the investments I've done or I've seen people do in the UK, I told myself, let me go for the lowest, which is 5%. So I, I'll use return on investment of 5% every year. Now, that sounds quite low, but it's better than the first example where someone just kept their money. And we shall see how that looks like. If you go to other places, I know in Uganda there are investments, and some people will be like, Uganda, yes, genuine investments that make you 18%, 17%. I've practiced them and they work. So don't stand there and say, ha, ah, Jonah, no, no, no. Yes, they do. Worship harvest is best where? And they are making these profits, okay? And even more, okay? And uh, I, won't give, I won't give away much, but while I was in Uganda, I met someone who told me, oh, there are these people who want to buy land 
in Uganda, they've been asking, how can we buy some land? Yeah? And the, the returns on investment, they are quite good as well. Okay? So if that's what you want to do, please go. But I use the UK. So your net worth in year one will be 2,400 because that's what you've saved. And potential monthly passive income year one. Passive income is what Miriam said. Income where you just sit somewhere and not do anything. And money just comes to you. How many of you love that? Imagine I'm here and 10 pounds is going one account, then 20 some. If, that, that's not bad. That's passive income. Because you've set up something. So year one, obviously, there won't be anything because you haven't done anything. Next, let's go to the next one. Brilliant. So I've just tried to get, I should have done maybe year two by itself so that you see exactly what happens. Now, what typically happens, I'm conscious of the camera, but I also need this. What typically happens in year two is if you get your 2,400 and invest it and your return is 5%, 5% of 2,400 is about 120 pounds. Do you see the 120 pounds? Okay, those who are going to do GCSE maths, free lesson here. Yeah, 10% is 240, that means 5% is 120. Okay, now what that means is your net worth at the end of year two is 4,920. How do I arrive at that figure? Is you had the 2,400 from year one. In year two, you've been saving as well every month. So you've carried on that basic practice. So you have another 2,400. When you add those two, that's 4,800. Then, because you invested, because when you invest the money, you get the interest and your capital comes back. So you invested it, so you got 120. When you add all those figures, it becomes 4,920. So your net worth at the end of year two is 4,920. That means if I divided that by 12, that means potentially your passive income is 410 every month. How do I do that? Just divide by 12. That means every month at least 410 pounds comes to you. Are we okay with that? Yeah, sorry, when I'm doing numbers, I get excited and sometimes I worry that I might lose you. Did you guys love your maths lessons? Eh? Fabel, did you love your maths lesson? How about the lady next to you? On your right, yes. On your left, no. Julie, don't worry, we shall go through these. Okay? <laughs> I, by the way, I understand these things. When, when you're doing these things. Now, year three, you see how your net worth grows in year three. So same principle. By the way, I have a spreadsheet where you can just change your monthly salary. I can share it with you. You can just change your monthly salary on the spreadsheet and it will calculate. I've put the formulas in for you. Okay? But those who know, who have a spreadsheet and maths, I'm sure can do this yourselves. Do you see how your potential passive income is growing in year three? Is that good? Remember at first, we are just doing the orange side, so we are just keeping our money. But you see now how your income has started growing. And I'm looking at the minimum return on investment in the UK, about 5%. Now, some of you might be sitting... Let me preempt this, because I've sat there and people have presented these things. Actually, Apmo says that he said these things and people have come back to him and rebuked him. And said you're lying, but he, all he's done is just said, okay, me let me practice what I'm saying. Yeah, like Miriam and your group, you guys have practiced. So people can stand there and say, group investments don't work. No, 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 no. Miriam is going to come and give us an example and say, for us, we are doing this. It's not smooth. We learn emotions, bichi, 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 but we are what? We are making progress. Okay. Have people wasted money? Yes, they have. Next. Brilliant. This is what happens after 10, 10 years. If you do this basic, I'm, I'm saying basic. Okay? Now, this is assuming your salary has never increased in 10 years. Do you see how basic I'm going? So I'm trying to factor in all those things. Your salary has never increased. Um, every investment you've done has given you 5%. Why have I left it there? Because there is a reality that sometimes it's less than that. 
Sometimes it's more than that. By the way, when you're going into investments, you make losses sometimes. One of the things we struggled with in my first group was people acknowledging that sometimes we made a loss. Bitcoin? We did Bitcoin. All our money wiped out in three weeks. We had a meeting. Victoria, I can't forget. You know those restaurants, Victoria Station at the top? We went and sat, all of us looking good, coming from work, sat down, and we were like, someone, one, and we came, and there was a discussion about Bitcoin. And you, you know when you have that inner voice? Because I've done, thank you, emotional investment. I've done, uh, do you remember the hats? Did you guys, pyramid hats and all of those things? By the, yeah, there used to be things where, is it, you get one person, then is it eight people each bring 100 pounds or 50 pounds, we change the amounts, then the top person gets and the next person, okay? And by the way, those things are still there, but they are being paraded in a different way now, okay? So they call them different things, but all it is is quick rich, get rich quick schemes, okay? Please, anyway. Out, stay away, guys. There is no getting rich quick schemes. But that's for, that's for me. If you're doing it and it works for you, good luck. Me, what I'll tell you is please stay away. Yeah, because I, I know it looks good. Do you know why it looks good? The first people at the top get money. But this is how the factor works. Initially, you need eight people to give the top person. Maybe I should have illustrated that. Then... When these eight people go to the top, you need eight times eight, which is 64 people, for all those people to get. Now, my maths is failing me now. Okay, who is good at? Fabio, you said you're good at maths, so you need to help me now. Then the next layer, you need eight times 64. That's about f close to 500, I think. Yeah, 500 something people. Then next, you need eight times 500, which is about 4,000. Yeah? Now, do you know what typically happens with pyramid schemes? They run out of people. My brother-in-law would won't mind me sharing this, but we, we entered it with my and Grace Kimulis. But they, they had um, a singing group called LIC. So we would go for meetings, and they called it LIC1, LIC2, LIC3, LIC4. Because that's what the pyramid schemes do to try and create the numbers. Okay? So... But the reality, it looks good when you earn, yeah, and we got some money, me and Irene. I won't lie, we got some money. But eventually it became too big. Then the 100 one, we're like, hey, we can't do 100. Let us do the 50 pound one. Roger came here and shared the other time. Yeah, Roger was part of us, and we went and did the 50 pounds one, Elephant and Castle. There was a Chinese in Elephant and Castle. We had our meeting there. Do you remember that Chinese? These days I'm sad when I pass by and it's not there. So, we went and sat there. We said 50. Then that failed. We went to 20 pounds. Why? Please watch out. When you're in a scheme that they first ask you this, and then they ask you if you bring this, and then if you do this, please watch out. I'll stop there on that. But me, I would say stay away, please. Anyway, we want to do this, don't we? So, and by the way, the returns for those guys, they tell you is 100%, 500%. I don't know which economy that is. That gives you that. Anyway, if you do this consistently, allow me to get here. Um, you camera people, forgive me. After 10 years, that is 30,186. After 10 years. Is that better than 24,000? Yes, it is. So that's what we are being recommended. And this is you as an individual earning just 1,000. I know more people Many people earn more than a thousand pounds, but I just use the basic. Let's go ahead and see some interesting illustrations. Next. Good. So, group investments. I thought let me let me bring a bit of group investments into it so that we understand how it works. Imagine it's ten of you. So let's count ten people around here, and all of you earn just a thousand pounds, and you practice those principles together. And there's consistency in my, one of the men's group that we have, and we've got some ladies in there. One of the things we've struggled with is consistency. And we're asking ourselves, how can we do this? 
Okay? I was doing the maths over the weekend. If 10 of you do it consistently, this is what you end up with after 10 years. 301,869. Now, guys, Andrew is, uh, is the mortgage guy here. Yeah? Let me use buy to let. You need about 25% deposit. Yeah? You can buy yourself some properties in the UK, the 10 of you, if you continuously do this. I need to say this again, young people, please, 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 please. You know these friendships where you guys meet on Saturday and all of that and all of that. Please encourage each other to, to, to start working and start practicing these things. You are going to take over the economies if you do this with discipline. Each time I do these things, I look back and say, I could have done better. And how many of you are feeling that? I could have done better. But I also acknowledge that, you remember the illustration I showed here of a foundational generation? There are some mistakes we've made that our young people, Oscar, is that Oscar? Oliver, please, you guys help us. Please be better. The Kesrons and the cows are going to look at you guys. I wish we had more younger people here. Precious, you guys need to help us. Mercy Grace, please, 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 get five of you, ten of you, and practice these things. So that after, you guys are still young. Some of you are 18, 20. So 10 years later, you are 30. And this is where you are. And you can buy about four or five properties. Go outside London and start there. And isn't that true? Yes, you can. If you want to buy in the posh areas, you can buy maybe one or two. Deposit 10% if you're buying a residential. Next. Oh, God, time. Next. Now, this one. Group of, oh, God, I left a, num a figure off there. This is the problem with over planning. That should supposed to be a group of 100, each earning 1,000. So I've expanded this. Do you know why I expanded it? Is let's think about our own church. How many are we in church? Maybe about, I think Pastor Lincoln always tells us maybe 200, 250, something like that. I don't know. Yeah? Okay. I just used 100 as an illustration. Even if it's not in church, elsewhere, when the youth were here, Pastor Lincoln, we were discussing with Pastor Lincoln later on, we said that on average, I think trying to work out the number of youth, we counted about 80, 70 to 80 youth who were here. 70 to 80. You know that group photo you guys took? Yeah, me and Pastor Lincoln were gossiping about you one of these weeks. Yeah, looking at each and every one of them trying to count. About 70 to 80. And there are some of you who are not present that, that day. So we said you can easily make 100, just the youth. So if 100 of them, each earning 1,000, practice these things on a monthly basis, do you see where they end up after 10 years? 3 million pounds, UK. Um, Jolly is not here, but I know you two have, have done some research on buildings, is it? For, for the church. Yeah, I don't know what average amounts you've seen. But, but this illustration shows that we come closer to you young people buying us a building. Why are you looking at me like, what are you talking about? Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah? Now, this person didn't just went for 240,000. That's why I left this total here. But if you invest, we are going into 3 million. Is that good? So group investments, that's the potential. If you do it well. Okay? Lastly, I think I like this last one best. Now, I know that all of us in here don't earn only 1,000 pounds. 
I know there are more people who earn more than a thousand. So I just, I was just saying, I hope I got the number right. Yes, if a hundred just gave, uh, earn two thousand pounds, we get to six million. After ten years, are we too old for this? No, we are not. If you're sixty, that means when you're seventy, you can be part of an organization of a hundred people that has six million pounds. If you're 60 years, when you're 70. If you're 50, when you're 60. If you're 40, when you're 50. Why did I share this? That is the power of group investments. Oh, God. Hate myself for taking so much time. But I hope the illustration made, made sense as well. Okay? Is there one or two quick questions? And Miriam, please come back because this is your thing, not mine. You're supposed to be answering the questions. Any quick questions for Miriam? Marcy has a mic. Please don't preach. Just ask the question. You know when people start that, I was, I was asking. No, no, just ask. Yeah, thank you, Miriam. I just wanted to find out how long did it take you to form this group with the women? And how long have you been going so far? Um, how long it took? Um, like I said, we started out... Um, Initially, just me speaking to my sister. And that was... So all together, we have been together now for about three years. Three years, I think. But in relation to investing, it's only been a year, I think, a year and a half. Because all we ever did is just gathering money and giving it to one person for a month to make them better for that month and the next month and the next month. Yeah, so we've been going for that. Have I answered your question? We've been... Uh, just know, what are you investing in? I don't need to know the figures, but what kind of business ventures are you investing in yeah. as a group? So as a group, we started out in some shares for some companies. We haven't yet gone into bonds that for Brother Jonah because he's also leading a group he, which he has, he's throwing me <laughs> in the deep end but he, he should also sp talk about that group and they've done a lot more than we have but we have also gone into property and how we've done that um, we've partnered with their company as a group so you see the potential of you know working together we, we're still on the journey and we, uh, we really want this real estate as one of our main, you know, ventures. But for now, yes, that's where we are. Thank you. Yes, that, that's really good. So that whole working together is so important. So thanks, Miriam. Yes, Steve, quickly. Uh, Marvin, can you take us to the slide of um, uh, individual uh, investment income? I think it's prior to, it's the third one prior to this one. Uh, what I wanted to share is that when you look at that figure, is that, yeah, after 10 months, yeah, uh, 10 years, if you look at the potential monthly passive income, even if you stopped, you stopped at 10 years to put in any more investment and it stays in there working for you, you'll be earning 2,500, which is even higher than what I shared about pension and all that. That's a, an amazing figure for you to be earning consistently, even if you stopped saving at 10 years time. Thank you. Okay, we really need to finish because uh, there is a discipline that we must follow. Okay, here. Now, what I would say again, come back next week, come on time. And by the way, we start at 9.30. Okay? So we must stop because there are other things that need to happen. But... Miriam is available, I'm available, and other people, we can answer some questions away from the general group. God bless you so much. Marcy, thank you for leading us. Can we appreciate Miriam? Next week, please come again, because I can't even start to tell you what is happening next week. But please come next week, because it's going to be good. God bless you so much. Love you.